Have you ever thought about why not using the same tools and procedures like software developers in the data science field? If yes, then this is the right video series for you. Hi, I'm Sascha. Welcome to the first video of a five video series about using DevOps tools for machine learning. If this is the first time on this channel for you and you want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing, then start now by subscribing to this channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Please take a moment and think about how data scientists work today. A regular work of a data scientist consists of course of preparing the data, then wrangling the data into the right format, getting rid of missing values, assuring that there is no bias in the data in terms of data quality, in terms of amount of data and so on and so on. Then comes feature selection, trying different models, trying different feature with models. And of course, comparing those models against each other, evaluating the quality of the models. But there's definitely more. Think about versioning your Python script. Think about versioning the data you're using to train the model. Think about automating tasks which are recurrently happening in the background, like for example, training the model, creating an API, deploying the model with that API to a hosting environment. And of course, thinking about scaling that API in the hosting environment. But this is for sure not the end. Data scientists should also consider and think about versioning their Python code, versioning the data they use to train the model, making it kind of a transparent model creation process for everybody. They should also think about how to automate common tasks like training all those various models, like pushing the models into an hosting environment, creating an API for the developers, putting it in front of the model, monitoring the model if it's working correctly, how it's used, and thinking about collecting data to retrain the model at some point in time. And there's one special tool set every software developer knows, and every or most of the software developers are already using. And why shouldn't you use, as a data scientist, those tools for data science as well? And this is called DevOps tools, or in the end, CICD tools like continuous integration, continuous deployment of, in the end, your models and the APIs in front of them. So let me show you in this first video the initial steps how to set such an environment up with Azure DevOps in this case and Azure Machine Learning Services, which are providing a tool set of various automation tasks in terms of machine learning tasks. Everything I'm going to show here can be done with pretty much any DevOps tool set. I picked Azure DevOps because I'm used to it, but you can do the same things I'm going to show here with pretty much any other tool set like Jenkins or others. The first thing I have to do in Azure DevOps to get started is of course creating a new project. Give that project a name. maybe a description and pick if it's either available complete publicly or my private repo or my private pipeline in the end. So project will be pi private, that's fine. Click on create. And Azure DevOps will now create all the relevant resources in the background and create a complete new project for me. After the project has been created, I go directly to my repos and of course they are empty. So what I could do is of course now connect or more or less use Git with a local repo, but I prepared already everything to get started. So I want to import an existing one and pick a URL of a GitHub repo, which I'm sharing publicly available on GitHub so if you want to play around with the same stuff I'm going to show here, you can just um, import. So I'm going 
going to import that one to get started. Import successful, sounds good. So let's view the repo and the files we have in here. So I decided to publish also some playground data sets in here, which we are going to use later on. Then of course some resources, which we will use in a later part of this series to deploy our APIs to Azure Container Instances or Azure Kubernetes Service. Some setup stuff, which we're using right away. So I'll go deeper into that topic in a minute. Some unit tests to test the data and for a later, per, for a later series, some integration tests for our APIs later on. So I added those resources already. And of course, since we are going to train a machine learning model, the relevant resources to train a model out of that data. So that's it for the files. The next thing I have to do is creating a pipeline. So I go to pipelines, click on pipelines and click on create a new pipeline. I've got the option to really hook up pretty much any Git subversion or any other related repo. Of course, I'm going to use the internal one I just created, I could, but I could also hook up Bitbucket, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise Server, other Git repositories or subversion. And if I go through that editor, this will, as you can see, create a YAML based pipeline which is great if I want to check in my pipeline into the source code and I'm going to do that later on to transfer that to YAML pipeline and publish that on a GitHub repo as well. So you can completely view what I created over that series. But for now, I want to use the classic editor to have a more graphical user interface for that. So I click on call editor, again, got the different options to really, yeah, where's my source code, pick one. So I'll stick to that one. Use the team I just created, as well as the repository I just created and the master branch. Of course, if you want to do that later on, it makes sense to really use a dev branch or feature branches and pull those in. But to keep it easy, I'll directly hook it up to the master branch. Then the system suggests me several templates to start on, either the featured ones or other ones. And I could search for those. But to really do everything from scratch, I want to create a complete empty job. In the job, several agents could run and process some things. I could also use staging later on and other, or stages later on and other things, but really keep it simple. I've got my pipeline, the pipe, the complete pipeline will be hosted not on a Visual Studio 2017, but on an Ubuntu host version 16.04. The first thing of course, to get the resources, which is completely fine. And then I can add my first agent job. But before I do that, there are also other things I have to consider. For example, when does that pipeline run? And for that, I can use, for example, triggers. I can also use variables from the outside to trigger information or push information into that pipeline. That's something we're not going to use now, but I want to use that trigger and for example, enable continuous integration. Say that only everything in the master branch will be included. I could also set up a schedule, for example, and do and add other things, what happens if the build is completed. But for now, I want to keep it simple. So just enable continuous integration. So going back to my agent, and now we're ready to really add further tasks. In 
every corner of that system, I'm able to view the YAML, which is behind that task, and for example, use that to create a complete YAML based file. But again, to keep it simple, to see what options are available, I decided to use the classical interface. So agent job is fine. Looks also fine as well, because the agent pool will be inherited from the pipeline. So that's still my Ubuntu machine. And I want to add my first tasks. With my first task, again, I've got a view of all available tasks. I could also create my own ones later on or use the marketplace to create or uh, to use third party tasks. But to really get started, I want to add, of course, Python tasks. So let's search for Python. And for example, I can pick which Python version I'm going to use. So let's first pick the appropriate Python version go to that task, tell it that I want to use Python version 3.6, for example, and that will be added to the path. Everything is fine for those settings. And this is more or less my first task to use. So the next thing I have to do is, of course, set up my Python environment. To do that, I added already a requirements file and a bash script into my source code directory. I'm just going to execute that. So I just click on plus. And in this case, I want to run a bash command. So adding that one, give that thing a name. So install Python requirements. And I either could run that complete command in line into my task, but I want to be able to change that. So I'm just referencing a file path. I could click on that to make it easy, search for my files. And I had one which called which I called install requirements as well as the requirements text file. So just click on that and add that. This bash script has no arguments, so I can leave that empty. So one thing is missing. I'm using in the install requirements bash script relative paths. To be able to do that, I also have to specify a working directory. In this case, again, this is my setup directory and I'm all set. After setting up the right Python version and install the pip packages which are needed, I want to do some data quality checks. For that, I installed a pip package called PyTest and created in the source code already some unit tests. To be able to use them, I have to add another task. Once again, a bash script. But this time, an inline bash script and use the PyTest utility. The PyTest needs, of course, a Python file where all the tests are in. In my case, I also added some additional parameters to export the test results. Because after I exported those test results, I'm also able to import those test results into the Azure DevOps pipeline results and see those in a nice dashboard. So for that, I exported those and added those parameters. I also have to give that task or should give that task a name, like data quality checks, and I'm all set. Once again, I want to upload those tasks. For that, I again add a new task and search for a task called publish test results, add that. And this is already set up for JUnit with the correct search term for the test results. So search any directory for a file start for every file that starts with test and is an XML file. And going back to this one, 
this is exporting those in a JUnit directory test minus results dot XML. I want to also make sure that this task will be always run. So even if the previous task has failed and the whole pipeline is not being canceled, execute that task. Good. I'm running my data quality checks and I'm publishing the results to the DevOps portal. So that should be it for my first piece of pipeline. And I'm going to save and queue or run that pipeline. And I click save and run. I can also have a look into the agent itself. So, so I can see that, yeah, the host is still Ubuntu. And soon it should pick up everything I created, initialize the job, download the tasks I created, and now run those tasks. For example, let me scroll a little bit down, set the Python version to 3.69, which is the latest version of 3.6, and then start to install the Python requirements, and so on and so on. In the meantime, let's have a look at my repository. So as I said, I created a bash script, which contains just for yeah, testing purposes and documentation purposes, displays the version of Python, install the Azure command line tool and the Azure machine learning SDK command line tools, which I'm going to use in a later video, and then install all the requirements in the requirements text file. I'm gonna dig deeper, I can see that I install scikit-learn, which I'm going to use later, scipy, numpy, so some standard libraries for mathematical purposes, joblib to later on save the model into a pickle file and load the model, some pandas to work around with data frames, and the PyTest toolset I'm currently using, as well as this package to export the relevant test results. Looking into the test results, I have my file with the unit tests, which has some yeah, test data, which is running, which is used for the unit tests. And of course I defined a few unit tests, those four, which are currently using the CSV files, which are stored in the data directory. Of course, later on, it might make sense to add external data imported from there. So going back to that pipeline, so this is still running. Have a look what it's doing. Oh, it's already finishing up. That's good. So let's scroll a little up. Again, I installed all the requirements. As you can see, this is just a standard pip output. Then run the quality check tests. So yeah, run four tests, collected the data publish the test results into the portal. Again, it's showing that four test results have been collected and the rest is more or less cleanup work from Azure DevOps. And the job succeeded. If I go back to that job itself, I now have a tests tab and see here my four test results, all four have been passed. Took around about 630 milliseconds to run those. Yeah, to give you a a brief idea what's happening in the portal. In this video, you saw the first steps you have to do to set up such a repo in Azure DevOps and create the first steps or first tasks in a pipeline to process data, to check data quality. And in the next video, you're going to see how to connect Azure DevOps with the machine learning services in Azure. So how to build that connection. So stay tuned and see you soon.